On December the 4th, 1990, in a game against the Sudbury Wolves, 67's rookie Grant Marshall fell awkwardly into the boards. The result? A broken neck. If you want to know what desire is, uh, there's a kid who overcame a broken neck, and he would come to every practice, and sometimes we were out at uh, Canterbury Rink, and it was cold, and he'd stand there and watch a practice, and he had these bolts in his head and everything. You could just see the frost. Marshall wasn't about to quit. He was determined to help the 67s in the playoffs, where they were facing elimination at the hands of the Oshawa Generals. He got his doctor to send a letter, his mom and dad to send a letter, and they were calling me and calling me. And so finally, I didn't want him to go through the summer without worrying, wondering, and so I did put him in the lineup. The Generals were a tough team, led by one intimidating foe in particular. Grant Marshall took a run at Eric Lindros. Now, Eric Lindros didn't want to hit Grant Marshall. Grant Marshall wanted to hit Eric Lindros. He found and proved to himself that he was okay, and then the next year was back to normal. When 67's fans are asked to name the top scorers in the history of the franchise, they're likely to come up with the names of Lee, Smith, Fox, and Castles. But number two on the all-time list is a five-foot-eight center who, despite never playing a game in the NHL, was among the best to play at the Civic Center. His name is Brett Sagan, and in his four seasons, he amassed 405 points, including three 100-point seasons. When I look at the, the great hands of people that we've had in the 20 years that I've been here, uh, Andrew Castles uh, and Brett Sagan were probably the two best playmakers that we had in those 20 years. You talk about a little guy with a big heart, you know, that was Brett Sagan and uh, that was one of the things that made him tick. He, he didn't have the most gifted set of wheels, but uh, a great competitor and uh, smart to another guy that had the great hands. He'd come to the bench with a bigger grin on his face and that if he set up somebody than if he scored the goal. Sagan's crowning moment came on March 10th, 1992, when he dished out four assists to become the first player in OHL history to top 300 in a career. The 1996-97 season was one of the best in the history of the Ottawa 67s. Alan McCauley was on his way to becoming the CHL's Player of the Year, Sean Blanchard, the Defenseman of the Year, and Brian Kilray, the country's Coach of the Year. But no moment from that year will be remembered more than the one on January 17, 1997, when Brian Kilray stood behind the bench for his 742nd career win. That night, thanks to a 6-0 triumph over North Bay, Kilray passed Ken Hodge to become the winningest coach in the history of Canadian junior hockey. In the history of the Ottawa 67s, no line was more prolific than the trio of Jim Fox, Evan Jolie, and Sean Simpson. Sean Simpson wasn't a great skater, but uh... Uh, he was uh, an excellent face-off guy and, uh, and a good setup man. He could get the puck to these two guys. Ivan Jolly could fly. He could flat out fly. One of the best skaters I think I've ever seen. And of course, Foxy was just, uh, he could put the puck through a keyhole. When they played together, Simpson, Fox, and Jolly, they just knew where each other was. Uh, they could dictate the terms of the game. During the 1979-80 season, each scored at least 65 goals and 149 points and they finished one, two, and four on the league scoring list. Uh, you know, I had a chance to go on and play in the NHL for 10 years with the LA Kings. I played with some great players, Marcel Dion, Dave Taylor, Charlie Simmer. Uh, I played with Bernie Nichols as a centerman, but I never ever, for whatever reason, had a chance to experience the same type of chemistry that I had that last year in junior with Sean and Yvonne. It was just one of those things where we clicked. We had played together a little bit in the first couple of years, uh, but that final season, everything certainly came together. In the summer of 1998, the Ottawa 67s were at a crossroads, though few knew it at the time. The team's launchers Earl Montagano and Howard Darwin were looking to sell the team. 
and a new face was ready to enter the Ottawa hockey world, Jeff Hunt. The sale was made in July of 1998, and Hunt concentrated his efforts on achieving one lofty goal. My immediate goal, and I think I said it at the first press conference, was my goal was to sell out the home opener, and there was a, I think, a murmur of chuckling, even though they were being polite at the time. We all just kind of put our hands up and said, you know, this guy, I don't know about this, if he's going to be able to do this. For the rest of that summer, I think I called on every favor and every friend I knew to buy uh, 10 tickets, 20 tickets, whatever they could. Hunt achieved his goal and a new era in junior hockey was launched as over 10,000 fans watched the 67s defeat Don Cherry's Mississauga Ice Dogs. Then Hunt had an entirely new focus. Once I got past the the initial hurdle of buying the team and then getting it uh, going well on an attendance point of view, I think we all became focused in getting and winning the Memorial Cup. Hunt reached that goal as well, and under his leadership, the 67s would break several attendance marks. The evidence was indisputable. Jeff Hunt had breathed new life into junior hockey in Ottawa and cemented himself a hollowed place in the sports community. When Brendan Bell took home the Max Kaminsky Trophy in 2003, it represented the record eighth time a 67's defenseman had earned the distinction of being the best at his position in the OHL. Joining Bell in this exclusive club are Randy Boyd, Brad Shaw, Brian Campbell, Chris Snell, Sean Blanchard, and Denny Potvan, who won the award twice. All but Potvan played for Kilray. Brian's always allowed his defenseman to be very creative. Uh, he's always had a great power play, and uh, somehow he manages to find two guys that work very well together. I think he believes in allowing a player to be uh, creative. You know, he doesn't really uh, limit you in what you can do. You have to play certainly within certain standards. You have to play hard. But he allowed, uh, you know, I can speak for, for the Doug Crossmans and myself, that he allowed us to do the things that we were uh, really strong at. Every practice was flow drills, and you were skating, shooting, and passing all the time. So. Um, guys that weren't as good when they came in got a lot better, and guys that were pretty good when they were young got even better. He didn't overcomplicate the game. I think that defense is hard enough. Uh, as you learn, you, you, it's, it's the type of job where you learn by making mistakes and then making sure they don't happen again, or at least uh, less severely the next time. Whether it's Boynton or Bell, Wilson or Crossman, Shaw or Patterson, Brian Kilray seems to be able to get more out of his defensemen than other coaches. Bell's win in 2003 was yet another reminder. In the 67's 40-year history, only once has the team chosen first in the OHL draft. And in 1993, the 67's made it count. The choice was Alan McCauley. Everybody heard about him. He's the big top draft choice. and. Uh, you know, was, everybody's excited to get him there, but it was unbelievable to see how mature he was at 16. I mean, he was he was like a 20-year-old at 16, and uh, you know, you don't see that very often. He was a great player. You know, when we got him, everyone knew he was a good hockey player. He uh, and he proved it. So, uh, you know, some of these fellows that you'd like to take credit for, but it was their natural ability and their improvement brought them along. Macaulay improved every year he played in the Barber Pools, earning OHL Player of the Year honors in 1996. He topped that feat the following season when he was named OHL and CHL Player of the Year. He had tremendous years. He won, what, two uh, Player of the Year trophies, and, and he went on to great success in the National League, mainly because he was just, he could play both ends of the rink and played to win. 